Hey everyone, Dino Monoxalis here. In this video, we're gonna talk about impedance, or as some people call it, homage. No, we're not talking about paying homage to some mystical base god or anything like that. We're actually talking about impedance, or more specifically, cabinet and amplifier impedance. In the most simplest terms, impedance is electrical resistance or the ability to impede the natural flow of electricity. It's that simple. Now, impedance is typically measured in ohms, which is designated by this sign. Now, how many times have you heard me say this amp is rated at such and such watts at four ohms, or this cabinet is an 800 watt, eight ohm cabinet? When a head is said to be, let's say, 1,000 watts at four ohms, that means that when that amp is connected to a four ohm load or four ohm impedance, it'll produce 1,000 watts. In the case of most solid state power sections like this PF350 here, the higher the impedance, the less power that amp will put out. That's usually why you'll see two different power ratings on the back of a solid state amp. So this particular amp will put out 350 watts at four ohms, but only 250 watts at eight ohms. So what happens if we go the opposite direction and go below four ohms? Let's say two ohms. Well, the amp might work for a little while, but it'll eventually thermal itself out and protect itself by momentarily turning off the power section. That usually indicates that there's something wrong, meaning it's trying to run below its nominal impedance or the impedance it was designed to operate at. Typically, most base amps are rated at eight and four ohms. Some tube amps like this Heritage CL are rated at two or four ohms. The most important thing to remember though is this. Stay within the manufacturer's recommended impedance ratings. If it says four eight ohms, run it at either four eight ohms. In the case of any of our tube amps, like this Heritage CL, or any classic CL or VR or 2 Pro, stay within the two or four ohm ratings. And never, ever, ever run them without a speaker load of some sort connected to them. Okay. Now let's talk about cabinets. Again, most base cabinets are designed in either four or eight ohm configurations. I've yet to see a two ohm cabinet because most heads won't go down to two ohms. And 16 ohms is usually where you see some guitar amp cabinets, but hardly ever for bass. Power ratings don't change on a cabinet though because it's the cabinet's designed impedance that's causing the resistance to the amp in the first place. When a cabinet is designed for a specific impedance, that impedance will never change. So, for all practical purposes, let's say we're dealing with either a four or an eight ohm cabinet. Now, in the case of this Heritage A10E cabinet, this guy is a four ohm cabinet, so we know that any amp we plug into this cabinet will put out the power that that amp is rated for at four ohms. Now, let's take a look at this PF115 HE cabinet. This guy is an 8 ohm cab, so we know that any amp we plug into this cabinet will put out the power that that amp is rated for at 8 ohms. Now what happens when we combine cabinets? <laughs> Remember back in high school algebra when we all asked, when the heck will I ever need this in life? Well now's the time. So when we combine cabinets, either by daisy chaining them, meaning one cabinet to another, or running one cabinet from each speaker out on the back of the head, we change the overall impedance presented to the amplifier. Now, for all you electrical gurus out there, I should mention that all Ampeg speaker connections on both our heads and our cabinets are wired in parallel. Two 8 ohm cabs now become one 4 ohm load. Two 4 ohm cabs now become one 2 ohm load. What happens if we combine an 8 ohm cab with a 4 ohm cab? We actually come up with a load of 2.67 ohms. So, a simple equation is to just take the common impedance of the two cabs and divide it by the number of cabinets. So, in this case, two 4 ohm cabinets divided by the number of cabs, two of them, gives you two ohms. But that only works so far. The actual equation is impedance times impedance over impedance plus impedance. Yeah, I know, there's that whole high school algebra thing again. So let's take a four ohm cab and an eight ohm cab and multiply them together. Four times eight gives us 32, right? Now take those same cabs and add them together. Four plus eight gives us 12. So 32 divided by 12 gives us 2.6667 ohms, 
but for all intents and purposes, we'll just call it 2.67 ohms. Again, most amps won't or don't work down to 2 ohms, and those that do definitely don't want to see a weird combination like 2.67 ohms. So combining two different impedances really isn't recommended. So next time you get the idea of daisy chaining all of your base cabinets together, along with all of your buddy's base cabinets to make one huge wall of doom, be careful and make sure you're running within your amp's recommended impedances and power ratings or you'll be paying homage to the gods of base amp repair. Yeah, I know, what can I say? It's a bad pop. Anyways, I hope this helps you out, guys. I'm Dino Monoxilis. Like I always say, play more bass. Yeah, 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 yeah.